Hello everyone, I wanted to give you guys a look inside my homeschool mom binder. This is where I keep all of the planning and record keeping for our homeschool for the year. And you will see a lot of different forms in here that I use. All of those are available in my homeschool planning printable complete pack that you can find in my shop over on my website. I will leave that link down below. But you could obviously use this with anything um, that you have, any kind of planning and record keeping sheets that you have. So over here, um, in this side pocket, I have our school year planning calendar. This is where I figure out what vacations and holidays we're going to take and when we're going to start and finish our school year. I did a separate video on how I actually plan our school year, so I will leave that linked uh, down below. But I keep that right here so that I have kind of a calendar at a glance to see kind of where we are and how much progress we're making and if we're staying on track. Then over here, you can see I've got attendance records, um, lesson plans, and then this is for my kindergartner, third grade, fifth grade, seventh grader. I also have a tab for high school planning and my ninth grader. The attendance and lesson plans are really for my kindergartner through seventh grader. Um, high school planning and all of that I, I do over here. Uh, my high schooler works pretty independently, but I'll talk about that as we go through the binder. So first off is attendance record. And as you can see, we have a family attendance record. So I have our last name, school date, and then I will be writing all of my children's names up here. And then this is really easy because it doesn't matter what year you're in. There's always a June 1st. Um, and so it's, I have... 14 months on here, so no matter when you start, you should be able to get your whole school year in on here. And so when we do school, I just put a check in the box, and the days that we don't do school, I leave blank. I don't count absences because we're never absent. It just, for not doing school, it means school is not in session that day. So I just check off when we did school as a family, and then at the end of each month, I write the total for that month, and then I will add the total for that month to the total to date and just kind of keep track of the total number of days that we've been doing school. So that is our family attendance record that's in there. Then I have my read aloud planning sheet. My read aloud planning sheet is really just a list of all of the books and their, the author that I would like to attempt to read aloud this school year. Um, that doesn't always happen but um, just the books that I'm hoping that we can get to, and sometimes just ones that I think, oh, these would be really fun if we had time. So I'm still working on our list. Right now I've listed um, all of the books that go along with um, the Heart for You China curriculum that we are gonna be using, and then we're currently reading The Indian in the Cupboard. So when we finish reading something, I just check it off and go back to the list, and obviously, see which one I want to read next. These ones up here are scheduled in our um, curriculum that we'll be using, but the other ones we'll try to squeeze in when we have time. So this is my read aloud planning list. The next section is lesson plans. And the first thing in my lesson plan is my loop schedule. This is in a plastic page protector so that I can use a dry erase marker on here. And I'll show you that in a minute. So first we have our daily things that I wanna do every day. We're always trying to do math, spelling, reading, and Bible every single day. And then we have two loop schedules. The first loop schedule I have here three times a week. Ideally, I would like to do um, this loop three times a week, but if that doesn't happen, that's okay. Um, we'll just pick off up where we left off. So this is our grammar and writing. We're gonna be looping through fix-it grammar and um, writing. I have IEW writing here, but I'm gonna kind of be using that along with some other stuff that I have. And so there will be some weeks that we'll do to grammar and a writing and other weeks that we'll just be doing grammar, but we'll just be looping through that. And I'll take my dry erase marker and when we finish one of those, um, you know, when we finish fix it grammar, I'll check that off. And then the next day I just know that I'm gonna come back and look at what's next on our loop here. And when I finish that, I'll check it off. The next time we have time to get to this loop, I'll come back and I'll go, okay, now we're on writing. And we'll just loop through that. The second loop that I have here is science and our Heart For You China, which covers 
Bible and social studies and handwriting and a lot of different things. We're going to be looping through those. Ideally, we're going to be doing this five days a week. We'll be getting to this, going through this loop every single week. But I know that that's not realistic when you have um, six kids at home, five that you're trying to homeschool. So we'll just loop through these. This is kind of my goal, but we don't. I don't always meet that. So I'll just check off with a whiteboard marker um, as we finish it, and then. When the new school day comes, I will be able to look here and see which one we're supposed to do next. So that's my loop schedule. The next section is for my weekly lesson plans. And I only have five weeks printed out right now because as I started printing these out, I realized that I'm probably not gonna wanna use the um, pre-labeled subjects. I think I'm gonna wanna use the one that is blank. So here's the blank one that I'm thinking I'm gonna actually print out instead. And um, it still has five lines for each of my five kids, but I will be able to write some different subjects in there. And that's mostly because our Heart For You China curriculum covers Bible, it covers social studies, it covers literature read alouds, it covers handwriting. So obviously I'm not gonna to wanna to write those in each of those spots. I'm just gonna write China here and fill in what we're going to do for that. So I'm gonna switch over to this one. But um, the one that I'm gonna be using has five lines, so there's a line for each of my kids. And the way that I like to do this is I, I like to use these friction pens. Each of my five kids that I'm homeschooling will have um, one of these five colors. And then if there's something that we're all doing together, I will write that in this blue color so that when I look at my lesson plans, I can easily go, okay, Today, we are all going to be doing science together and I will have that written in blue and then I can easily um, see which assignments are for which kid based on the color. Now, I'm gonna be using the weekly lesson plans to plan lessons for kindergarten, third, fifth, and seventh. I'm gonna be using them differently for my ninth grader. The way I'm gonna use these for my ninth grader is instead of writing what she's supposed to be doing each day, I'm gonna be writing deadlines on here because I want my ninth grader, my high schooler, um, and we've already been working on this in middle school, but she is learning to manage her time wisely. And so I give her her stack of curriculum and then I set some deadlines, like maybe for science by this particular date on you know Friday, August, you know whatever, you need to have gotten through lesson five. And so I will write just up here lesson five. And so all these days will be blank and then um, there'll be nothing written for my ninth grader. Then all of a sudden I'll see lesson five. And so I know I need to go check in with my ninth grader and make sure that she is up to lesson you know five or um, whatever. I don't remember what I just said, but up to the lesson that I want her to be on. And then we can reevaluate if she has gone way um, past that particular lesson. We can go, okay, is, you know, you can keep picking up the pace or maybe she just loves science so much, but she hasn't gotten very far in math and she's not meeting that deadline. And so I have to say, okay, we need to slow down in science and spend more time with math or whatever and, and talk with her about how to better manage her time. So last year when we used this, really she met all of the deadlines and it was just a good um, kind of reminder for her that there were deadlines and that she needed to stay on track and that I was gonna check in on her, but she did really good at sticking to um, the deadlines that we have. So that's how I'm gonna use the weekly lesson plans. One line for each student, a different color um, for each student, and then group things we'll do in a, another color. Um, seventh down to kindergarten, I will actually write the lesson plans in here and my ninth grader, it will just be um, deadlines. I have this weekly lesson plan pack with no lines, with one line, two line, three lines, four lines, five lines, um, labeled and unlabeled if you are interested in getting these lesson plans. All right, the next thing that I have is where I keep all the records for kindergarten through seventh grade. And so since they're all set up pretty similar, we're just gonna jump over to seventh grade and take a look. So when you flip over 
to each student's kind of record keeping section, the first thing that I have is their course of study. And obviously I will be writing my seventh grader's name up here, but I have our school year and the grade that she is in. And then what I do is just list all of the subjects that she is doing and the curriculum and resources that we use. So for Bible, she's using apologetics in action for master books. English, um, it, she's using writing strands, intermediate one, along with various novels and biographies. What that means is we're just gonna pick novels and biographies that she's interested in reading to go along with and just kind of add in for her English curriculum. So I've written out all her subjects and the curriculum that we're using. So every student has a course of study. Then we have a reading list, and on the reading list, she will be writing any books that she read for school, as well as any books that she read for leisure. And she'll be keeping track of those and writing in the date. We also have, everybody has an extracurricular activities list. These are things that they did maybe outside of the normal school subjects, um, whether that's an art class that they took, sports activities, piano lessons, choir, anything like that, even volunteer activities that they did. We will go ahead and write that in there along with the date that they did them. And then last, they have a field trips list. And same kind of thing, we write the date that we did the field trip, the location that we went to, and the activity that we did while we were there. And so I have all of those forms for each of my children from uh, kindergarten all the way up to seventh grade. Now, one of the other things that I do sometimes keep back here are tests, quizzes, and samples of my students' work. I will store back here. Now, for my seventh grader um, and um, most of my kids, what I do is they have a binder for the whole school year and that when they complete a quiz, a test, when they do an assignment, those go in their binder and they store them. And at the end of the year, then I will go through their binder, I will pull out test quizzes, samples of their work, and I will put them into my kind of record keeping tubs that I have. I did a video on that, so I will leave that link down below, but I just take them right out of their binder and put them into that tub. However, I have some children who don't do a very good job of keeping their assignments and tests and quizzes intact in their binder. Their binder gets a little messy, pages get torn and wrinkled and crumpled up or go missing. The binder seems to come open and everything seems to fall out on a regular basis. So for those children, I do go ahead and stick their sample works and stuff in my um, homeschool mom binder, just so that I know that they're safe. So some of the kids will have their work stored behind here and then the rest of them will keep them in their binder. And then at the end of the year, I will go through that and store them in our my record keeping system that I have for long term. So that's how I have it set up for kind of attendance lesson planning for kindergarten through seventh grade. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this, the last two tabs that are for my high schooler. The first section here is high school planning, and this is where I do all the planning for all four years of high school. So I use my high school uh, four-year planning sheet. And again, my daughter obviously is not through 12th grade. She's just starting ninth grade, but I already have all these things in here because I'm planning her school year. I'm trying to make sure she gets in everything that she needs to um, and trying to break it up in you know to the right um, amount of work each year. I'm gonna do a separate video on how I homeschool high school and how I use all these forms to plan, to record keep. I'm gonna go into a lot more detail in that video that's gonna be coming out soon. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here. So if you're wondering how you use these for high school, keep your eye out for that video. Make sure to subscribe so you'll um, be notified when that video comes out. But this is where I plan for the school year, for the four years of high school. and. Um, there are already some things here that we thought we would get to in ninth grade, like PE, that we're going to be moving over. So this is already going to be changing. When you turn this over, my next one is my high school four-year planning sheet by semesters. So this whole row is ninth grade. This is first semester, second semester, and summer. When my daughter finishes first semester of ninth grade, I will write in all the courses that she actually did in first semester and their credit, which obviously would mostly be half a credit. Then I will do the same thing for second semester. If she does anything in the summer, I can total up the number of credits she did for ninth grade. Same thing for 10th 
11th and 12th. And so again, I will go into more detail about how I use these um, as well, but this is my planning section. Then we flip over to the kind of the record keeping section. I have a separate attendance record for my high schooler, mostly because um, with so many little ones in our family, there are days when if I can't do school with my little ones, just none of the younger ones end up doing school and we just take the day off. But my high schooler usually continues to work through um, the school year, even if we're even if we are not doing school, she continues to work. So I'm gonna have her keep her own attendance record. This sheet can also be used for keeping track of the hours that they do a particular subject so that you have a better idea if, if a subject that they did, a course they took is worth a half a credit or a whole credit. And again, I will talk more about that in that upcoming video, but that is her attendance record. She also has a reading list. Again, any books that she read for school or for leisure will be in um, this reading list. Extracurricular activity sheet. And again, this is anything that she has done outside of the normal school that I think might be something that I could put on a college transcript. So sports, music, art classes, um, any volunteer work that she did, if she volunteered at church, um, any jobs that she did, um, even things like if you have a student who um, maybe helped your husband or helped a friend maybe rebuild a car or something like that, you can put that on here as well. So I just try to include as much as possible on here, anything and everything outside of the normal schoolwork that, you know, courses that she's taking, put it on here. I'm probably not going to put all these on her high school transcript, but, but I will put um, I like to keep track of them because I will forget. I will forget what she did in ninth grade. Um, and I'm guessing you probably will too. So I like to have a list of that. This next section is where I have all of the different subjects that she is taking. And I'm starting points here is a curriculum that covers all three of these subjects. So I'm gonna come back to this one in a minute because it's a little bit different than how the rest of them are. So I'm gonna use algebra as my example here. So for algebra, um, I just have a piece of paper in a plastic sheet here, page protector with a label for algebra. When you flip it over, um, the first thing that you're gonna see is a high school course description worksheet where I write the course title, the year it's taken, the credit, course descri description, any curriculum and resources we used and our evaluation criteria. I will go into how you do this in that upcoming high school video. Behind that, I have a grading sheet. Um, her algebra is not going to have a weighted grade. It's just gonna have a normal grade, so I use this grading sheet right here. Let me flip back over to starting points here. Okay, so here's starting points. It covers all three of these subjects. So because it covers three um, courses, um, or three subjects, I have three high school course description form uh, worksheets. So this is the one for biblical worldview. I have one for English. And then starting points also covers American history. I'm gonna call it foundations of American history. So um, this is kind of the course, but this is the title that I'm gonna give it on the transcript. And um, so then there's all the information about that. And then, even though she's taking three separate, uh, one course counts for three subjects, she's only getting one grade, and that grade will be applied to all three subjects. And again, I will go into more detail about that in the high school video, but this is going to be a weighted graded course. So this course is gonna have a weighted grade. So I'm using my weighted grading sheet here. She's gonna be graded by assignments, essay, essays, and participation. So that is gonna be the grading sheet. The last one I wanna show you here is biology. So here's my biology plus lab. Here's the course description worksheet. Obviously, I still have, have work to do to fill out the course description and the evaluation criteria. This one is going to be a weighted graded course. However, I have the grading sheet and the weighted grading sheet in here. And that is because there is so many tests and assignments um, that she's gonna be doing with biology and labs and all of that. I'm not gonna be able to fit 
all of the tests and quizzes that she's gonna take in this tw these 20 lines. So I'm going to write them here, and then um, when this sheet fills up, I will go ahead and say, okay, let me total all of the tests, and I will just put it over here. Then I'll say, let me total up all of the labs, and I will put that total over here. Then I will come to the back of my teacher's binder here, my homeschool mom binder, and I'll pull out another grading sheet. I will add it in here. When that grading sheet fills up, then I will add in the next line. And then I can still um, use this for giving my daughter a weighted grade, but like I said, this does not have enough lines for all the things that she's going to be doing. And so I'm gonna use both of those in combination. And then obviously I have something for Spanish, film, Bible, and the world religions course that she's taking. And then like I said, the grading sheets, extra grading sheets in the back. So that's just a quick look, maybe that wasn't very quick, but a more detailed look, I guess, inside my homeschool mom binder. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you like these forms and you would like to have them, um, they are available in my shop and I will leave that linked down below as well.